Conservative coalition MPs are pushing the Morrison government for more radical and far-reaching religious freedom provisions. Let's go to Christy Kulcher, joins us live now. Christy, of course, this comes in the context of the Israel Falau case. That's right, Kieran. These particular MPs who are pushing for the change in forthcoming laws have dubbed it Falau's Law. For a former Deputy Prime Minister Barnaby Joyce says that Rugby Australia's sacking of Israel Falau over his uh, controversial religious post that he made to social media has left many people feeling awkward and uneasy. He's now calling for uh, laws to exempt religious beliefs from employment contracts, essentially giving anyone who shares their religious views legal protection. Mr Joyce says you can't bring people's faith beliefs into a contract. Uh, your own views on who God is, where God God is and whether there is a God should remain your own personal views and not part of any contractual obligation. Though it's been inspired by the sacking of Israel Falau, Mr Joyce says that it shouldn't be nicknamed Falau's law as the law would be made for everybody. He does have the backing of Attorney General uh, Christian Porter, who's expected to present a Religious Discrimination Act to Parliament as soon as July. Well, in a statement, the 30-year-old said, It has been a privilege and an honour to represent Australia and my home state of New South Wales, playing the game I love. I'm deeply saddened by today's decision to terminate my employment, and I am considering my options. As Australians, we are born with certain rights, including the right to freedom of religion and the right to freedom of expression. I believe it is my duty as a Christian to share God's word. Upholding my religious beliefs should not prevent my ability to work or play for my club and country. Well, let's speak to Andrea Williams, who is Chief Executive at Christian Concern, and Michael Walker, who is a journalist and LGBT commentator. Hello to you both. Andrea Williams, uh, to you first. Rugby Australia saying they were left with no choice. They had no option but to sack Israel Folau. It's extraordinary, isn't it, um, that Railing Castle then said, for, for inclusion, rugby is a sport of inclusion, but we're going to exclude uh, Israel Folau because he's a Christian, because he holds these views. Israel Folau is an extraordinary person, an extraordinary man of faith, who, has post, who posts many, many posts on media, on social media, and he says continually, I'm a sinner, I'm in need of salvation. That's the kind of thing he posts. Today he was posting that he loves God, that he wants to serve God, that he loves the game, that he, he posts very often about being saved uh, from where he once was and the hope that he's found in Jesus Christ. And that's a hope that he wants to point everybody to. And actually, he's a man full of love and care for everyone. He's not singling out anyone here. He's putting out there the message that he believes in. And furthermore, not just that, he's a man who believes, but he's a man who plays rugby incredibly well. So well, in fact, that he was player of the year for and in 2015, 2016, 2017. He's the triple uh, try scorer in Super League rugby. He's an extraordinary person with an extraordinary faith. And, and is rugby, you know, is rugby Australia really saying, in the name of ex inclusion, we're going to exclude this ex best, the best player? We're going to exclude someone of that caliber because he's a Christian, because he believes in the Bible, because that's what they've done. It's I serious. I just want to pick you up on one thing you said there, Andrew Williams, before we get the views of Michael Walker. You said that he wasn't singling anyone out. But he was, wasn't Absolutely he? But he not. said, hell awaits for drunks, homosexuals, adulterers, liars, fornicators, thieves, atheists and uh, idolaters. Uh, uh, is he not singling out all of those groups and saying that hell awaits them? And then, and, and the, well, you know, pretty much all of us can fall into that, those, those various brackets at various points. And he goes on to talk about all, us all being sinners in, in other posts that are linked to that. He doesn't, the point is, the message of the Bible, and it's a message, of course, that is rooted at the heart of Western society, at the heart of Great Britain, at the heart um, of Australia, is that we're... We have all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We don't live up to our own standards, let alone God. That's the message. And the message of Jesus Christ is that he loves us and he forgives each one of us and that we might find hope in him. It's a wonderful, beautiful, freeing, forgiving message. And, you know, social media is a bit of a blunt instrument, mm. but he's on that social media all the time expressing his views. 
just like so many people out there. And Michael, you know, the, Michael the, Walker, let, let's get your views now. Was he sacked for his faith and for expressing his views? Uh, I think it's important to make some distinctions. So he wasn't sacked because of his beliefs. If he just believed uh, that homosexuals are going to go to hell, I'd think that was a shame, but I don't think that should exclude him from his profession. It's that he broadcast these beliefs. So he broadcast them to over 100,000 people on Twitter and over 300,000 people on Instagram. He has those followers because of his role as a rugby player. And so I think the Australian Rugby Association had every right to say that he has a duty, given that he's representing Australian rugby, to not use discriminatory language and to not spread ideas which will make many young gay people watching rugby who look up to him feel incredibly unwelcome in the sport and potentially it could have impacts that are quite severe on their life if that makes them feel they are unable to come out to their parents and their friends. This is the kind of thing that can really destroy lives. I, I also want to go back to this idea that the message of Christianity is that we're all sinners. So I, I'm, not, I'm not religious, I'm not, I'm not an expert on religion, but how I interpret that is we've all made mistakes and we can move, we can move on from them. Now, I don't consider homosexuality a mistake. Yeah, so, so some people might say, yes, I've lied, I've cheated, I've stolen, it's a sin, I will repent and make up for that. That's not how we should think about homosexuality. If some people do, that doesn't mean thinking it doesn't mean you should get fired from your job, but broadcasting it, I think in this case, does. Well, doesn't that get us into a, an argument about freedom of speech and expression then? Uh, uh, well, I don't think anyone should be... I don't think it should be against the law to, to broadcast these kind of ideas, but I think if you are a very successful, very famous person in a public-facing role, then the organisation that employs you has every right to say that by you using discriminatory language publicly and by using the platform that ultimately your involvement in that sport and that organisation provides you, then they have every right to say, this is not the image we want of our sport being portrayed, this is discriminatory, this is the kind of thing that will exclude homosexual people from getting involved in rugby, from supporting rugby. And also, I mean, as I say, I think this has a, a broader impact on society at large. If this is the kind of thing that's acceptable, well, as I say, I think it should be legal to say it, but I think it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be acceptable for people who are in very powerful, influential positions to be able to spread this kind of thing without consequence. Uh, yeah, Andrew Williams, he was playing for Australia, he was representing Australia, and as such, he had signed a contract and he had signed up to a code of conduct. And that this was a breach of that code of conduct. He's a, he's a role model and he was expressing views that are not socially acceptable. So believing in the Bible is not socially acceptable. Believing in the Bible means that you breach Australia's rugby code of conduct. That's very serious. That's a very serious uh, offence. Michael was making the point that it's not about believing speech, in the Bible. It's not about what you believe. It's about what you say publicly. You can believe it, but you can't say it. That's not the world that we live in. You know. So the head of Qantas is permitted to to, to fly the rainbow flag, to push push um, and pay for um, men, major campaigns um, in in Australia. But a man who believes the Bible loses his job, loses loses his position in rugby. That's, where, where does the that's... Bible specifically say that hell awaits someone who is homosexual? Well, we're talked uh, uh, through, through the Bible, through the whole message of the Bible is about the message of the hope and the forgiveness and the redemption that is found in Jesus Christ. And that re the reality is that God has set eternity in the hearts of each one of us and that, and, and that the hope of heaven awaits, that actually after this earthly life, there is heaven and hell. That's a reality for us. And Jesus Christ sent his only son to die for each one of us on the cross to forgive us for our sins, that we might know him and know him for eternity. That's a message of great hope which has been in the which has been preached, which people lose their lives for, the taking of the gospel across the world. Uh, across the world. And one of the ways in which uh, today people are spreading the good news of the gospel is through social media. And sometimes, you know, you People can take offence at it. People do it in different ways. But that was the motivation. The motivation of Israel Falau was that he had known what it was not to know the Lord Jesus Christ, not to know God. And his motivation generally, because you've got to take this from a man who broadcasts on social media a lot, it, in the context of okay. years of social media uh, posts, this man is seeking to bring the hope of Jesus Christ to those that follow him as a most fantastic rugby player. Michael Walker, those voices like Israel Falaus are being silenced. Is that right? Uh, 
Well, had they been silenced, I mean, I think Israel Palau should be welcome to talk about any aspect of his religion he likes on social media, unless it's discriminatory. And when it is discriminatory, he can expect some kind of consequence from his employer. This is very, very different from the state banning anyone expressing their opinions. This is about him saying something as a role model, which will have incredibly negative consequences in society at large. There are, again, a number of points said there that I think it is worth challenging. So this idea that... Uh, this is a necessary part of religion. I mean, I don't want to get into a debate about theology, but we do know that there are strands of Christianity and all the great religions uh, which preach inclusiveness uh, for people depending on their sexuality, which, as we know, is not a choice. Uh, so I think it's a great shame that there are strands and branches of religion which are teaching that homosexuals go to hell, not least for people who are part of those religions and will inevitably... Statistically, we know there will be many people in every single religion who are homosexual, and that will be incredibly difficult okay. to hear, to have preached that you're going to go to hell. Michael but, uh, Walker, I think I'm, really, I'm really sorry. Okay. I know there's plenty we want to get to, but we're running out of time. Michael, Andrea, thank you both very much indeed. This